Story 1 It was a cold and rainy night in the remote town of Oakhaven. The Walmart store was eerily quiet, save for the occasional creak of the floorboards and the hum of the fluorescent lights. Inside, a group of employees were preparing to close up for the night. There was Maya, the young and enthusiastic cashier, Ben, the grizzled and cynical security guard, and Jacob, the affable and hardworking manager. They were joined by a few other employees, including a stock boy named Ethan and a cleaning lady named Olivia. As the clock struck midnight, Jacob announced that it was time to close up. The employees began to tidy up the store and lock the doors. Maya was the last to finish, and she was just about to leave when she heard a noise. She turned around and saw a dark figure standing in the shadows of the aisle. She froze in fear, her heart pounding in her chest. The figure stepped into the light, and Maya gasped in horror. It was a woman, but she was no ordinary woman. Her skin was pale and gaunt, her eyes were sunken and lifeless, and her lips were curled into a twisted smile. She was wearing a tattered Walmart uniform, and her long black hair was matted and tangled. Maya screamed, and the other employees rushed to her side. They saw the woman too, and they were just as terrified as she was. Who are you? Ben demanded, his voice trembling. The woman didn't answer. She just stood there, staring at them with her dead eyes. Jacob took a step forward. We need to get out of here, he said. This place is not safe. The employees agreed, and they hurried to the back of the store. They tried to open the door, but it was locked. We're trapped, Maya said, her voice filled with despair. The woman began to walk towards them, her movements slow and deliberate. The employees backed away, their fear growing with every step she took. What do we do? Ethan asked. We have to fight, Ben said. We can't let her get us. He grabbed a fire extinguisher from the wall and raised it in front of him. The other employees followed suit, grabbing anything they could use as a weapon. The woman stopped in front of them and smiled. You can't fight me, she said. I am death. She raised her hand, and the employees felt a wave of coldness wash over them. They dropped their weapons and fell to the ground, paralyzed with fear. The woman laughed her voice echoing through the empty store. Now, you will all die, she said. She reached out and touched Maya's forehead. Maya screamed in agony as her skin began to wither and decay. The other employees watched in horror as Maya's body turned to dust before their eyes. The woman moved on to the next employee, and the next, and the next. One by one, the employees died, their bodies turning to dust. By the time she reached Jacob, she was laughing maniacally. You're the last one, she said. Now, you will die too. She reached out to touch him, but Jacob raised his hand and stopped her. No, he said, I will not die. He closed his eyes and concentrated. Suddenly, his body began to glow with a white light. The woman staggered backwards, shielding her eyes from the brightness. What are you? She cried. I am the light, Jacob said, and I will banish you from this place. The light grew brighter and brighter, until the woman could no longer withstand it. She screamed and vanished into thin air. The light faded, and Jacob collapsed to the ground, exhausted. He looked around and saw the bodies of his dead friends. He wept for them, but he knew that they were finally at peace. Jacob stood up and walked to the door. He unlocked it and stepped outside into the cold night air. He looked up at the sky and saw a single star shining brightly. He smiled, knowing that he had defeated the darkness. Jacob never returned to the Walmart store. He left Oakhaven and started a new life elsewhere. But he never forgot the horrors he had witnessed that night. He knew that there were things in the world that were beyond human comprehension but he also knew that the light was stronger than any darkness. Story 2 The old Walmart store stood at the edge of town, its faded blue sign creaking in the wind. It was a relic from a bygone era, a place where fluorescent lights flickered and linoleum floors echoed with the footsteps of weary shoppers. But on this particular night, 
the store would reveal its darkest secrets to a group of unsuspecting employees. The clock struck midnight as the employees gathered in the break room. There was Jake, the grizzled night manager with a permanent scowl, Linda, the cashier who had seen it all, and Tim, the stock boy who always seemed lost in thought. They were an odd bunch brought together by circumstance and a shared need for a paycheck. As Jake handed out the assignments, he warned them about the strange happenings that occurred after hours. Items moved on their own, whispers echoed through empty aisles, and sometimes, if you listened closely, you could hear faint cries for help. But they were all used to it. After all, it was just another night at Walmart. Linda was manning the cash register when she saw him, a tall man in a tattered coat, pushing an empty cart. His eyes were hollow, and his skin was ashen. She rang up his non-existent items and tried to make small talk, but he didn't respond. Instead, he shuffled toward the exit and disappeared into thin air. Tim was stocking shelves in aisle 13 when he heard it, the sound of children laughing. But there were no kids around, the store was empty except for him. He followed the laughter to the end of the aisle and found an old toy section filled with broken dolls and faded action figures. Their eyes seemed to follow him as he walked past. Jake was in the frozen food section when he felt a blast of cold air. The freezers were all closed, but something was off. He turned around and saw her, a woman in a white dress, her hair matted with blood. She reached out to him with frostbitten fingers and whispered, help me. Jake stumbled backward and ran for the exit. As dawn approached, the employees gathered in the break room once more. They exchanged stories of their encounters, the phantom shopper, the lost souls in aisle 13, and the frozen woman in white. They knew they had to do something. They couldn't keep working in this haunted place. Armed with brooms and flashlights, they ventured into the heart of Walmart. The shelves trembled and shadows danced on the walls as they confronted the spirits that roamed its aisles. Linda recited an old prayer she had learned from her grandmother. Tim held up a crucifix he had found in Lost and Found. Jake simply clenched his fists. And then they saw it, the source of all their troubles, a portal to another realm hidden behind the employee bathroom. It glowed with an otherworldly light, beckoning them closer. With one last glance at each other, they stepped through. And so ended their night of supernatural terrors. The employees of Walmart faced their fears head-on and emerged victorious. But as they returned to their mundane lives, they couldn't shake off the memories of that fateful night. The old store still stood at the edge of town, waiting for its next victims, unsuspecting souls who would dare to work late at Walmart. Story 3. John was a security guard at a Walmart store. He had been working there for several years and had never had any problems. He was a good employee and was always on the lookout for suspicious activity. One night, John was patrolling the store when he saw a woman standing in the middle of aisle 10. She was wearing a white dress and had long black hair. John had never seen her before. Can I help you with something? John asked. The woman didn't answer. She just stared at him with her empty eyes. Mom. John said, getting closer. Are you okay? The woman turned and walked away. John followed her, but she was gone when he reached the end of the aisle. John was shaken by the encounter, but he didn't think much of it at the time. He figured the woman was just a customer who was having a bad day. The next night, John was patrolling the store again when he saw the woman again. She was standing in the same spot in aisle 10. Ma'am, John said, approaching her, I need you to leave the store. The woman didn't answer. She just stared at him with her empty eyes. John reached out to grab the woman's arm, but she disappeared into thin air. John was terrified. He ran out of aisle 10 and back to the security office. He called his supervisor and told him what had happened. John's supervisor didn't believe him at first, but he eventually agreed to send someone to investigate. A few minutes later, a police officer arrived at the store. John took the officer to aisle 10, but the woman was gone. I know what I saw, John said to the officer. 
she was a ghost. The officer laughed. There's no such thing as ghosts, he said. The officer left the store and John went back to work. He tried to forget about the woman, but he couldn't. He kept seeing her face in his mind. The next night, John was patrolling the store again when he saw the woman again. She was standing in the same spot in aisle 10. John knew he had to do something. He couldn't let her scare him away. John walked up to the woman and stood in front of her. He looked her in the eye and said, I'm not afraid of you. The woman smiled. It was a cold, cruel smile. You should be, she said. The woman raised her hand and pointed at John. John felt a jolt of pain in his chest. He collapsed to the ground. John tried to scream, but no sound came out. He could feel his life force draining away. The woman stood over John and laughed. She laughed until tears streamed down her face. This is for what you did to me, she said. The woman disappeared into thin air. John lay on the ground, gasping for breath. He knew he was dying. A few minutes later, a customer found John and called for help. John was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead on arrival. The police investigated John's death, but they couldn't find any evidence of foul play. The doctor who performed John's autopsy said that he had died of a heart attack. But John's friends and co-workers knew the truth. They knew that John had been killed by the ghost of the woman in aisle 10. The Walmart store remained closed for several days after John's death. When it reopened, the employees were scared to go to work. They were all afraid of seeing the ghost of the woman in aisle 10. One night, a group of employees were working late when they saw the woman standing in the middle of aisle 10. She was wearing a white dress and had long black hair. The employees were terrified. They ran out of the store and never looked back. The Walmart store closed for good the next day. The building was torn down and a new shopping center was built in its place. But some people say that the ghost of the woman in aisle 10 still haunts the shopping center. They say that she can be seen walking the aisles at night, searching for her revenge.